All right, this evening we are going to be uh, talking to Fred Van Linty. Um, he is he has a new book, the uh, comic book history of basketball. You also, I, I, I know his stuff from action philosophers, action presidents, and uh, some of the other fun uh, history uh, comics he did about the comics industry. So uh, let's bring him in and let's uh, see uh, what he's up to. Hey, how's it going? Perfect. It's great. Put me in, Coach. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, as as uh, we were, we were talking just before we started, uh, it was about six years ago that uh, we first met at the uh, King Kirby uh, event at uh, Schmaltz Brewing up there in uh, Albany, the Albany right. area. And uh, I believe you were one of the guests because you wrote a scream or a play about Kirby. Is that that's correct? I did. I co-wrote it with my wife, the playwright Chris <laughs> Gilman. Yeah, I th I think she was there too. I think I met both of you. She was. Mm -hmm. So, and, uh, you know, on and off we have touched. Uh, you, I mean, you 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 probably meet a lot of people at con, so you know, you probably don't remember the couple of times I stopped by. Uh, I think one New York con, I got a sketch from Ryan. It was a it was a Simpsons DC matchup, and it was it's Ryan and somebody else. So, <laughs> oh, nice. good time. Ryan Dun I, I spend many a con with Ryan Dunlavey, who I do uh, action philosophers and the complex history comics with. And currently, so action about available everywhere. Yeah. So let's uh, let's talk about your new uh, book that you have coming out, the comic book history of basketball. Sure. <laughs> so, um, well, before we do that. Um, how did you get into comics? Do you remember the first comic that you uh, you picked up, and or what you know the one that kind of hooked you? I do. It was uh, it was the Great Comic Book Heroes by Jules Pfeiffer, which was this book that he had done in the mid '60s. He had written a New Yorker essay. He had already he was a very famous uh, cartoonist himself. I think he had won the Pulitzer Prize at that point. But he started in the business. Uh, assisting Will Eisner on the spirit in Eisner's studio after World War II. And so he wrote this great essay about all the crazy comics characters and, and all the crazy uh, things that happened to him while he was working at the Eisner studio. And uh, this was during, this was in 1966 when the Adam West Batman TV show was the, the biggest thing in, in the culture, arguably. At that time, you know, Kirby and Lee were just coming off of doing Galactus and Fantastic Four. And so it was a very much comics were sort of in the zeitgeist. So someone to give my dad the book version of the comic book history or the, the comic book heroes. And uh, uh, in addition to the essay that was in The New Yorker, they had reprinted all these um like golden age origin stories and first appearances of like Batman and Superman and Captain America. And of course the spirit and a bunch of other characters. And I, I just made my mother read this book that my dad had to me over and over and over again until finally <laughs> she threw her hands up and said, I'm not doing this anymore. Go find a real book. Uh, but I was a stubborn child and have become a stubborn adult. And uh, I just stared at the pages until the words made sense. That's basically how I taught myself how to read and, once I entered sort of pre-K and kindergarten at a much higher reading level than anyone else around me, my mother did a pretty quick about face on the usefulness of comics <laughs> or how much she was, she would tolerate them. Yeah. Okay. So when did you realize that you wanted to write comic books? Uh, I wanted to be a writer fairly early on, but I was interested in prose. I sort of dabbled in screenwriting a little bit. It didn't really occur to me. I, you know, there was no school really at the time to go um, work on becoming a comic book writer. But when I went to Syracuse University, I ended up going to the comic book club. The most of the members of which were in the illustration department and were really into drawing comics. And I really loved drawing comics for them. And I met a couple people, a bunch of people actually. I I would later work go on to work with. Um, including Steve Ellis, who I did a bunch of indie comics with in the 90s, and Ryan Dunlavey, who I 
him working with right now and have since for many uh, we when we mentioned earlier he uh, he was he was the president i believe of comics plus when i joined okay <laughs> so let's now let's get back to the i asked you before this uh interview got off track uh let's talk about your new book, the comic book history of basketball it sure. seems to be right down your alley <laughs> you've done the comic book history of comics <laughs> So, uh, what, uh, tell us, uh, what, did, what inspired you to do, you know, this project? Chad, I'm not going to lie to you. A lot of projects get started because people with money ask you, do you want to write a comic book about basketball? <laughs> and you say, yes. <laughs> Look, we all, we all wish that I could sit here and say that since the, since I was in the womb, tiny fetus Fred, before he even knew what basketball was, wanted to do a comic book about basketball. But in fact, instead, what actually happened was uh, 10 Speed Press, which is a great imprint of Random House, which I had worked with before, Greg Pack, and I did a book with them called Make Comics Like the Pros. Uh, they've got a nonfiction comics line, and they've done the comic book story of beer and, and, and uh, the Constitution and, and baseball, and so they wanted to do one on basketball. And uh, my agent knew I was really into basketball and uh, said, do you want to do this? And I said, absolutely. It was fun to do something that was uh, neither intellectual in the sense of action philosophers or academic like history, or for that matter, all that geeky, relatively speaking, although hardcore sports nerds will give superhero fans a run for their money in terms of you know, obsessiveness and argumentativeness <laughs> and everything else. But uh, it was a definitely a very cool change of pace. So did you have to do a lot of research for the book? Uh, what, 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 tell us a bit about, I guess, the book itself. <laughs> sure. What can, what can people, when they expect to make it up? Well, uh, Basketball has a fascinating history. It starts primarily in 1896 in Springfield, Massachusetts, where James Naismith, a Canadian phys ed instructor, instructor, by which I mean he was an instructor of phys ed instructors. So I like to say he was a phys ed instructor, instructor, uh, had to invent a new game to keep his students from murdering each other doing, during a particularly brutal New England winter when they couldn't play outside. And basketball basically takes off as uh, a, a early hit uh, in the late 19th century, you know, within uh, 10 years, I think it's, in, it's offered at the Olympics as an as a, as a sp exhibition sport uh, and becomes embraced by men, women, people of all races, people all over the world. China makes basketball a national sport in 1935 way earlier than, than a lot of us maybe would suspect. And uh, it's just sort of a fascinating story. And we, we trace it from the college game, the street game, NCAA, the women's game. And, and uh, what is very fascinating to me is all the sort of um, false starts and sort of interesting journey from, you know, it being primarily an amateur game to how huge the NBA is today worldwide. If you told somebody in if you told somebody in 1956, say, uh, which was the last year the an all white team won the NBA championship, just to give an example of, of how quickly integration changed the game, they would have thought you were nuts to find out that the NBA is 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 such a gigantic popular sport that it's you know second only to football in the states here in the states and you know challenges soccer and is bigger than soccer than in plenty of countries in the world. And uh, Joe Cooper is the artist. Did you? Uh, yes. Have have you have you worked with him before, or is this the first time? Uh, Joe is great. Joe and I did a book called Magnus Robot Fighter for Dynamite. Uh, that was a really fun book we got to work on. Him and Corey Smith were the primary artists in that book, and and, and I thought of him. Uh, he is a huge uh, Lakers fan. He's in L.A. I'm here in in Brooklyn. I am a I'm one of the 12 Brooklyn Nets fans, so I'm sorry <laughs> to see them be eliminated from the playoffs recently, but uh, suck it, Knicks. We were in the playoffs. <laughs> we 
We got invited to the bubble. You're outside the yeah. bubble looking in. <laughs> Not personal. <laughs> but so I'm representing because, of course, as everyone knows, the Nets started out as an ABA yeah. team, which was the rival league to the NBA in the 60s and 70s. So what was the most interesting fact that you learned that you didn't know before about, you know, when you were, you know, doing the research for the book? That's a great question. I mean, uh, there's so many sort of fascinating things and so many fascinating personalities that you really get to look at as a result, result of this game. Um, I was fascinated to learn that one of the main reasons the NBA even really was anyone paid attention to at all was that there was a massive uh, Black Sox style scandal rocked the NCAA in the late 40s, uh, a scheme called point shaving, which is not necessarily teams throwing games, but it's teams purposely missing shots to keep a uh, score within a point spread that you know is favorable to whatever gambler is paying you off. You know, uh, college sports used to be known as the slot machine of, of sports because once you introduced i mean kind of as it is today like betting simply on winners and losers is not great because you know very typically the you know the the team you expect to win is going to win you know the, the basketball is sort of unique and the, these sort of individual super players and we see this time and time again throughout basketball history and particularly today where where big men and really talented men are able to completely dominate the court, dominate the game in a way that in other team sports, it's, it's, it's much harder to do. So if I'm a crooked gambler and you are a NCAA, if you're a city college of New York, uh, beaver, you know, uh, mm-hmm. and I, I'm, you know, you're not getting paid Jack and your college is making money hand over fist on your game. If I give you $300 to, you know, score six points instead of 12 or whatever it is that in that night's game, you're probably, you know, that, that was hugely tempting. And, uh, the city of New York city college, New York, a lot of those players were busting that scandal. A lot of the, um, uh, Kentucky, which even then was one of the biggest college, uh, programs in the country. They got banned, uh, for a year. Cause they had players who were, who, who were busted for accepting bribes. So a part of the reason, so the, the, what was called the BAA, which is the Basketball Association of America, had been around. Um, the Knicks, the New York Knicks, for example, were essentially a creation of Madison Square Garden to keep basketball in the garden because it was so associated with basketball when college teams weren't playing, you know. Uh, and part of the reason the Knicks and, and the other BEA teams, some of the original teams were the Philadelphia Warriors, now the Golden State Warriors. And you had um, Boston Celtics, one of their uh, first-generation BEA team. Part of the reason they got any traction at all was because uh, a lot of fans abandoned college basketball once they learned or thought it was crooked. Uh, and weirdly, you know, it's, it's sort of a strange thing to think that people go to pro sports because college sports were crooked, but... Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what happened, you know. So, um, is there anything else before we, you know, kind of move on to some other stuff you'd like to say about the book that I have not asked you about? Or it's good. It's getting a great early reaction. Uh, it's 165 pages. Great, great uh, colors by Dave Schwartz over Joe's inks. Um, it ends more or less in modern times with LeBron's decision on ESPN. I, 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 I've written a lot of history, and I feel like within so that happened in 2010, so that was 10 years ago. I feel like 10 years, like a decade, is like the cutoff for mm-hmm. history. Everything after that's current events. So some other stuff since 2010 gets mentioned, but it goes from 1896 to 2010. Great art, great stories. It covers every aspect of basketball, including – like I said, the women's game and the pro game and the college game and the street game. So if you know anyone in your life who likes basketball or comics, I strongly recommend it. So do we, are you, it sounds like you have more coming from your action presidents line. Or? Uh, not at the moment. We have produced our four contracted books from Harper Collins. They are out. Mm-hmm. They cover George Washington, Abraham Lincoln, Teddy Roosevelt, and, um, John F. Kennedy. 
John Kennedy is Ryan's favorite. Uh, Teddy Roosevelt is mine. Uh, they had, they've gotten a great reception. You can get them. Uh, I get all these reports from people buying them in supermarkets, which I think is terrific. Uh, Walmart has them. You know, all your local bookstores have them. Uh, we do not currently have any plans to make more, but you run out and buy them. They really have their choice, but to give us a new contract. You know what I'm saying? You could make an inaction president. Uh, you mean like the but William Henry Harrison? Is that what you're going for? Or yeah, among others, <laughs> died in 40 days. Gave his yeah. gave his inaugural speech without a coat in the middle of January and died of pneumonia. Yeah, that it's would, that would probably be a part. short, short series. It would, it would be more of a pamphlet. <laughs> yeah, and it it would be it would, be more, it would not be terribly interesting. Although he had an interesting so, military uh, career, you know, he that's how he became president in the first place. <laughs> he fought uh, Native Americans in the Midwest. I guess, that, I guess that could be semi-interesting. He was a legit... He, Chad, since you dared to bring up an inaction president, and I, now I'm going to go on about Liam Henry Harrison, he was <laughs> second or third in sort of the tradition of electing war heroes, which is, I'm sure you know used to be a very big thing. Before we elected game show hosts in America, we elected war heroes. So how we got from war heroes <laughs> to yeah. ex game show hosts. Yeah. Interesting question. <laughs> so I was looking at your website and it looks like uh, you are you and Ryan are part uh, part of the action at adv- activists, right? Uh, could you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Well, that's a book that the Department of Education of the City of New York hired us to create for their middle grade program. And it teaches uh, grades five, six, seven, I think that's right, about uh, basically how the government works, um, sort of how you can affect change within government, and also how you can affect change in the streets through protest. And uh, so there's sort of the nuts and bolts sort of governmental poli sci of it all at the beginning. And then we have some history of civil rights protests. And then we follow a character named Nia, who you see on the cover there, who starts out as a student activist in the seventh grade and then actually runs for New York City Council when she's older and eligible. Although, fun fact, you only have to be 18 years old to run for New York City Council. So kids, it's not far (laughs) off. You can do it tomorrow, for all I know, depending on when your birthday is. Um, and that was extremely rewarding. We've gotten to speak to a lot of great teachers groups. We had a great reaction to that. If you go to fredvinley.com, you get links. It's free. New York City taxpayers paid for it. Uh, to get a physical copy of it, you kind of had to be in a public city schoolroom. We, we, our books were distributed more or less the week before the lockdown started and everyone got sent home. So mm-hmm. I think the kids will have them, but you can download it for free via PDF off the the Board of Education's website, and that link is in my, on my website and a bunch of other places. Yeah, and it looks like you're also uh, trans or transitioning. I don't know. Transitioning is the word, but uh, into the uh, into a literary. You have a novel. Uh, is it out or is it in the works? Yeah, I've got a couple novels con out. Uh, one is called The Con Artist, and it's a murder mystery. So they're both sort of humorous, satirical murder mysteries that Quirk Books put out. Uh, the first was called Ten Dead Comedians, and it's about a bunch mm-hmm. of stand-up comedians trapped in Desert Island who are getting knocked off one by one, and one of them may be doing it. So they have to figure that out before they all go. Uh, and one of them is, and the other one is called The Con Artist. It is about a famous comic book artist who gets accused of murdering his er- his, his editor, at San Diego Comic Con, so he decides to solve the crime himself. Not based on, uh, you know, a true story, right? Got to read it. I'm not going to tell you. <laughs> so, I don't give that away for free. <laughs> well played. <laughs> I and I just, uh, I just want to say that when uh, the comic book history of comics was coming out. That was a series that I really enjoyed. It was something that I could sit down and really digest, and it awesome. was very, it was very specific, and it 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 read like labor of love. 
<laughs> yeah, very much so. It's something I, the comics history is something I've been uh, interested in my whole life. Now that uh, I do it professionally, I never want to read another comics history book again. <laughs> just, you know, that's just kind of the way I am. Uh, and and that's great you dug that. We kickstarted Ryan. And I kickstarted earlier in the year the comic book history of animation, which is the companion volume to that. And uh, mm -hmm. very excited to announce. I think here on this podcast for the first time since you're the first person I'm talking to since it's really gone away is that IDW will be bringing out the comic book version of that, the physical version of that book, um, starting in November. And you'll be able to get it through. Oh, comic very shops. nice. Apologies. So, comic book history of animation. It's listening for November. From IDW. I'll definitely have to check that out. Awesome. So, so uh, have you been, you know, you're in New York like myself, and we've pretty much been in lockdown. Have you been uh, reading anything, or have you gone back and read anything, or you know that you've enjoyed that you had had time to read when they weren't, you know, publishing new books or. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've, I've read a lot of great stuff. Like I I'm doing this fun thing. Uh, and again, you can see the links on my website. Um, 13th dimension, which is a great, um, comics, um, website has, uh, we started with, uh, Denny O'Neill's the question, which I was able to complete a few months before he passed away and sort of write like ranking my favorite issues of some favorite creators on their birthdays. So I've done John Burns alpha flight and I've done, um, I just turned in Jack Kirby's Jack Kirby's birthdays on uh, Friday. As many of you know, as you said, that would be the fourth anniversary, fifth anniversary of us meeting right at that, that Kirby event on his birthday. Yeah. Upstate. Um, so that's a lot. That's been a lot of fun. It's been a lot of fun to read old to, excuse to read old comics. And what's cool <laughs> is that, uh, you know, the reason I was there at that Albany event was um, because Chris and I had written this play about Jack Kirby called King Kirby, and we are going to bring out an audio drama version of that play very soon. Uh, it's going to be a oh, mini series. Cool. I just was listening to the latest cut of the episode two today. I think people are going to be really excited about that. It's the original cast, the original New York production, and uh, it's going to be super fun. And that and that tell, told the life of Jack Kirby and his career in comics, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay, that's right. His conflict with Stan and uh, uh, his service in World War Two, the fought in mm -hmm. France, all nine yards. Oh, that that's that's very interesting, and I I will definitely have to check that out. Also, you're giving me a lot of stuff to count. <laughs> so I'm here for. Hey, okay. so uh, uh, do do you want to pitch the uh, basketball uh, comic one more time? Because it's out uh, in a couple of days. It's out September first. Well, uh, the ship is late from wherever it is they printed it from. So they've actually bumped the uh, date to September 22nd. Oh. So you have a couple more weeks <laughs> to wait. Um, but uh, uh, it, it's the comic book story of basketball. It is a comic book. So you see, I say this title, and some people, particularly comics people, are like, how many comic book, how many basketball comics are you talking about? I'm like, no, 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 no. This is not a history of comic book. Or sorry, this is not a history of basketball comics. This is a mm -hmm. this is a history of basketball in comic book form. Yeah, <laughs> you know, all your favorite players are in there, including ones you never heard of before. A lot of great stories. A lot of great. Uh, what I get most excited about is talking about how the um, how the game evolved from its kind of weird. I mean, the the first you know score of the first basketball game was one to nothing. Partly because they would have a tip off. They would do the tip off like after every point was scored, which is insane. And yeah. after and the beginning of every quarter, which is insane. Uh, but my favorite fact about that is that part of the reason that it was only one to nothing was that um, this is at a YMCA in Springfield, Massachusetts, where the basketball hall of fame is right now. Uh, it occurred, <laughs> they never occurred to them to punch holes out of the basket. <laughs> so you had to go get the janitor with his stepladder and a broom to go out and 
knock the ball out of the basket, and it wouldn't be for a couple of years that that they even agreed to punch holes in the basket because the prevailing fear was that the ball would go through the hoop so fast no one would register the point. So that's why you had to keep the – I guess that's like the putt-putt golf theory of basketball. Yeah. You keep the ball in the hole – long enough for the ref to say it's good or whatever. I don't know. Certainly <laughs> within a decade, they or five years, they, they figured out that that was not going to fly. So they start putting holes in the basket. Well, uh, do you, do you plan to maybe have the book available in this, the, uh, hall of fame or is that, you know, that would that'd be the perfect place. <laughs> well, uh, uh, that is marketing and sales job. I think they uh-huh. are, Working on it. I just saw the spreadsheet for all the places they're contacting. I think that was definitely on it. That'd be awesome. It's yeah, a fun, I mean, it's a fun are... little museum. It's in a mall. It's one of the strangest museums you will ever go to. Yeah. It's, it's off the highway. It's yeah, like a we, mall uh... on itself next to a bigger mall. Yeah, we meet my... My brother there because it's halfway between our house and his place in Connecticut. So we meet in Springfield, and we it's we usually meet at one of the restaurants right beside the Hall of Fame. So that's the closest I've ever been to it. I have never been in it. <laughs> it's fun. It's worth your time. It's it's a it's a neat little museum. It it took me and my sister like an hour after we drove up there to do it, and then and then we went to Six Flags, which is right there in Springfield down the highway because uh, we blew through the Hall Museum in an hour. Well, uh, do you have any, uh, well, give your links for social media and stuff. I, know, I would ask you, you know, what cons you would be appearing at, but I don't think anybody's going to be appearing at cons. So. I'm not. <laughs> I was only slated to appear at one con this year and it just got canceled like 10 days ago. New York Comic yeah. Con, so. Uh, if you can spell my name, as you see on the screen, that's my website. That's my Twitter and Facebook handle. It's my Instagram handle. So I'm available right. to the well, people. Uh, yes. Well, I want to, you know, thank you for uh, taking the time to talk this evening and uh, look forward to uh, checking out the history of uh, basketball in the comic book form. Sounds um, good. I will iter- reiterate. Uh, it's a little confusing because we did the comic book history of comics, and the, and I will admit, Ten Speed kind of ripped me off. But now they're hiring me, so I will leave them alone. It's the comic book story of basketball. So when you Google it, <laughs> the the technical title, the actual title is the comic book story of basketball. But confuse it not with the comic book history of animation, which is coming out in November from IDW. Now I've thoroughly confused everybody. But one's animation, one's huh. basketball. People will figure yeah. it out. That's okay. I'll include all links in the uh, show notes. Great. <laughs> um, so if you ever have anything, you know, you're working on, because I know you do a lot of stuff uh, with, you know, various companies, you, you know, you're more than welcome. We'd love to have you back to talk about. This is great, Chad. That'd be awesome. All right. Well, uh, before we go, I'm just going to throw up my contact information up here. And then uh, we can, let's see, how does that look? That looks great. All right. Well, uh, again, thanks for taking the time. And, uh, you know, look forward to reading the book and uh, stay safe and stay healthy. See you at courtside, Chad. Yep. <laughs> All right. Catch you later. Bye-bye. Take care.